Good evening and welcome to Know Your Rights. I am Janelle Mencias, your host for tonight's show. On our show, you hear directly from attorneys who break down the law and explain the rights of citizens on common legal challenges that confront Belizeans on a daily basis. Tonight, our topic is how to access the courts for justice. You can watch us live on Channel 7 or on Facebook at Colorblind Multimedia Productions. You can also participate in the conversation by posting your comments on our, or questions on our Facebook page. Joining us tonight to discuss this topic is attorney Deshaun Arzu Torres. Good evening and welcome Deshaun. Hi Janelle, thanks for having me. So for the last two weeks we've pretty much been discussing property, but tonight we're changing it a little bit and we're discussing how to access the courts for justice. So one of the first things I'd like to ask you about is when considering taking a matter to the court, there are all these legal fees, court mm -hmm. costs that come up with that. What services are offered or afforded to Belizeans that aren't able to afford an attorney? Okay, um, I would start firstly from the standpoint of a private attorney. Private attorneys also have a professional obligation to render legal aid um, to those who can't afford it. Um, besides that, there's a legal aid center in Belize that provides assistance to low-income persons um, who generally cannot afford a private attorney. Now, um, before we go into the whole legal aid, uh, are there any other services that we can access from the courts other than just that? Yeah, it would essentially be via a private attorney or via the public public okay. system. So legal aid, tell us what is legal aid, uh, who can access it? Um, it's not necessarily free, um, but it would be the provision of services, provision of assistance to those persons who can't afford it. Um, we have the situation uh, at times where a person may be convicted or may be charged with an offense. Um, we have situations where you want a will drafted, you want a contract drafted, um, you just don't have the finances um, to engage that private attorney. Um, so you can approach the legal aid clinic, there's a center um, on Albert Street, um, and there are a wide range of services that, would, that they would offer um, to the general public. So this is available to every and anyone who needs well, it? Well, there are eligibility requirements. Okay. Um, you have to meet certain guidelines that they have set out. Um, I've been made to understand that there's a means test um, that you go in, it's on a walk-in basis. Um, you set up an appointment to speak with one of the attorneys. Uh, there are four trained attorneys working at the Legal Aid Center. Okay. Um, and you go through the questionnaire, they ask you a series of questions. Um, and it's very, it's very much um, discretionary. Um, so at the end of your interview with them, then they would make a determination as to whether or not you would satisfy and then become eligible for legal aid. So. For the legal aid, it covers a multitude of um, issues, as you said. You can get a will drafted, different uh, things. Um, if you have a criminal case coming up, can you also access Correct. assistance from there? But there are exclusions. There okay. are exclusions. Um, the exclusions would be in terms of commercial matters, okay. company matters, um, murder, as well, um, and any claim that would exceed twenty thousand dollars, the legal aid center would not um, provide services to you if it falls under any of those headings. Okay. Now, what if I want to file a claim mm -hmm. in the court? What's the process to do that, and do I need an attorney to do that, or is that something I can do on my own? It's dependent again whether you will be filing a claim in the magistrate court, um, which would be the lower courts or whether you're in the Supreme Court and the high courts. Um, in the magistrate courts, you can file a claim without the assistance of an attorney. Um, you simply visit the offices, you indicate to them um, what type of matter you wish to um, put in a plaint for, but again, they're going to look at the value. Um, okay. If it would tend to exceed $15,000, then you would not be able to file such a claim there. You'd have to go to the Supreme Court. Um, with your claim. But it, it's relatively easy. Um, I believe the cost is about $2 or $4 to file your claim. Okay. Um, they set a date and your matter would then be heard before one of the magistrates. And is there someone there that assists you through the process? Yes, there's a clerk of court um, at each 
uh, magistrate court um, in every judicial district, and so they would be able to run you through the process. Now, in terms of um, family court, how do I start a matter in, in that area? Well, again, it's, it's very simple. You approach the courts, the family courts here in Belize City, um, situated on Bishop Street. Okay. Um, you visit again with the clerk of court. What they tend to do, though, is before you file um, whatever application it is that you wish for the court to hear, um, you would sit with an intake officer and that officer, you would exchange certain information and they would make a determination as to um, what would be best suited for you, if it's a custody matter, if it's access, um, maintenance, whatever it is. Okay. Now, um, one of the things you spoke about was the magistrate's court and the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Can you just speak a little bit about the difference between the two for our viewers? The magistrate's court is generally dealing with smaller claims um, versus the Supreme Court that deal with um, larger claims, commercial matters, company, company matters. Um, the magistrate's court, they really want to keep um, matters very simplistic there. Um, you could file a claim um, dealing with issues of rent. Again, they would look at, look at the value. Um, you could find a debt collection matter if somebody owes you a certain amount of, of money, um, which would again be lower than what um, the Supreme Court sets out to be. Um, you take your matter there. Now, shifting a little bit, if I um faced with a charge for mm -hmm. a criminal matter and I'm unable to afford a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Is a lawyer appointed for me um, or do I face trial on my own? What's Again, the process there? It's dependent on the type of, of, crime. A, yes, of offense that you're charged with. Um, for murder, the state has an obligation to um, retain private counselor to get a legal um, aid attorney, as we would, we would term it for you. Um, any other offense, you would have to retain privately, or again, via the Legal Aid Services Center. Um, they could assist with that. When it comes to children in the court, how does the, how does the court system handle that in the case where the parent may not be able to provide that kind of support um, what, what's the offer to the, to the family or to the child? What happens there is that the Human Services Department that generally regulates um, issues concerning um, minors, they're there to assist. Um, parents can approach the Human Services Department and what they tend to do is to refer the matter to a private attorney who may charge, again, less um, um, than what generally would be charged um, if you were to go privately. Um, to retain those attorneys, that attorney's services, um, or the family court may be able to assist when that minor appears in court um, to say, well, representation is definitely needed. And many times it's, it's via the human services okay. department. And is that process a little bit different for, for children undergoing the, the court, a court trial in terms of um, how it's set up, who can be there with them? A parent must be there, a parent or a guardian must be there. At times, there are community rehabilitation officers as well who are present um, that would guide them through the process, provide counseling, um, but pair, a parent or guardian generally has to be in attendance. Okay, well, we'll take a short break and when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about how you can access the court systems in Belize. Good night, my name is Janelle Mencias and we're here tonight with attorney Deshaun Torres discussing how Belizeans can access the court system. Mm. Now, Deshaun, can we go back to legal aid? Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit more about the center um, and other uh, services that's offered there. Well, the Legal Aid Center is, I believe I've said it before, is located on Albert Street. Um, it's on a walk-in basis, so you could walk into the center, um, say whether you need a consultation, you just want 
advice on an issue or whether you want legal representation. Um, there are four trained attorneys there. Um, we must emphasize that they're trained, they've been to law school, <laughs> um, because people tend to say, well, they don't necessarily know what they're talking right. about. Um, but they have um, a lot of experience in the courts um, and they would generally sit with you. You go through whatever legal issue it is, um, that you're facing, they would give you advice. If it's legal representation, they would offer the representation to you. Um, the charges, there are a myriad of charges. For instance, um, a divorce via the legal aid center would be $1,000. Okay. Um, the criminal matters, again, would be lesser than if you were to um, retain a private counsel. Um, they take you through the means tests um, to see, first of all, if they can provide that advice, that assistance, to you, um, and that's generally how how it's how it's run. Now, can you talk a little bit about that means test? Um, what somebody going to the center can expect? Correct. They would generally ask, um, first of all, your income. What bracket do you fall um, within? Um, your expenses, your expenditure for the month. So they would get into um, a financial analysis of your. Um, whatever budgetary situation, they would simply ask, ask that and um, based on that, then they would make a determination. Um, you may be earning a million dollars, um, but your expenses may exceed that. That does not necessarily mean that you would um, receive some sort of legal aid. Um, it's those low income persons right. who can't afford um, to get that private so attorney. there are people who would be disqualified Correct. from accessing the, Correct. the, Correct. the aid? Correct. Okay. Now, um, when it comes to um, the court, going to the court, and I'm not an English-speaking person, mm -hmm. is there a service provided to me to be able to take my complaint through the court? The courts, of course, are there for you to access justice, that there is equality and that there is fairness. Um, so if you are not an English-speaking person, um, you would indicate that to the clerk of court. Um, we're talking at the magistrate court's level and even at the Supreme Court level um, where there may be a language issue or language barrier, you must say so, um, and they are obligated to provide um, some sort of translation service, whether the court does it itself or whether your attorney would hire somebody for that purpose. Just as, all as a part of ensuring that you have a fair, fair trial. One of the things I've always heard about is the idea of mediation. Mm -hmm. uh, what is that process like and when is it used? The mediation process is generally used for um, dispute resolution um, so that it's it's very conciliatory. Um, it's not adversarial any at all. You sit, um, you discuss whatever issues you have and incidentally the mediation has been opened um, via the family court so that there would be mediation of family issues and the mediation is already in the Supreme, Supreme Court system. So it's a means of resolving disputes amicably and both parties would agree and consent to the terms of whether that, what, whatever the issue is. And is there a cost associated with that? Yes, in the Supreme Court the cost of mediation is $500 so that is shared equally between the parties. Um, a mediator is appointed, um, well, well, is selected, not necessarily appointed, it's selected, um, and that person assists in resolving the issue. Okay. Now, one of the other things you have is when um, the court appoints an attorney for you, mm -hmm. and in the case where you want to appeal, because you obviously believe that you're not guilty of what they're charging you for, is the court also obligated to allow that attorney to take it to the Court of Appeal? Um, no, there's no, no obligation rests with the court. Um, that appointment only extends to that particular um, hearing. Um, if you want to appeal to the Court of Appeal, that's really on you. If your legal aid attorney um, sees fit or they would say, well, you know what, I'll be generous enough to proceed and to continue assisting you in the um, higher courts, 
then um, that's a plus for you. Um, but where you don't have that representation going forward and you um, believe that you have a good case or justice was denied, um, then you're free to approach the courts, file your documents. And I've seen in the Court of Appeal um, that the judges themselves, for those persons who don't have legal representation um, in the criminal sphere, do assist um, those persons to ensure that they have a fair trial. Okay. Now, can you tell us a little bit more about, I know we keep going back to it's something if you can afford it, mm -hmm. but most people obviously can't afford it. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of people, I should say, that might not be able to afford these services mm -hmm. and um, you really have to depend on, like you're saying, uh, legal aid who might just really have a heart <laughs> for that, you know. <laughs> How, is there any other way that people can access you know, aid to help them with their situations? The Bar Association um, of Belize is there. Um, you can approach the president of the bar. The president standing now is Miss Priscilla Banner. Um, there is a rotation generally at times. I've seen that the UNDP is now offering a clinic um, okay. down south right, um, right. where legal advice is going to be issued for a day. Um, and you never know what or how that translates into something, something further. Um, so it, even in speaking with a private attorney, that attorney may say, well, yes, you can't afford it, but I am willing to assist, um, free of cost, because I believe in your cause or whatever, whatever it may be. Now, is there anything else you can share with regards to services provided by the court for individuals? Um, by the court itself, the only service that the court um, assists with is in terms of murder, capital cases. Um, aside from that, you have the center that's um, government operated um, and the services extend to just as those that a private attorney would provide but with certain limitations and, and restrictions. Um, so that's in essence um, what it is. Okay. Well, we'll take a short break and when we return, Deshaun will be answering some of your questions. Welcome back to Know Your Rights. I am Janelle Mencias, and our guest tonight is Attorney Deshaun Arzu Torres, and we are discussing how to access the courts for justice. We thank you for your questions and comments on Facebook. We have selected three of your questions to ask our guest attorney. Elvin asks, what if you were convicted on something you didn't do and don't have the money to appeal? Can you get legal assistance to take the appeal to a higher court? Um, what I would say to Elvin, again, if you don't have the finances, you try at best to approach a legal aid center or you visit with a private attorney who may be able to give you some assistance. But going forward um, to the Court of Appeal, um, the Registrar of the Supreme Court or the courts itself would not give you that assistance to take it to the Court of Appeal. Um, so it's kind of your back. To square one, legal aid center. And why is that? Um, it's just the law. Okay. Um, it's simply the law. Um, the representation simply extends to the Supreme Court at that level, at the Supreme Court level. Okay. Our next question comes from Marlon. Marlon wants to know if someone is caught with a gun, can he get legal aid to help him with the case? Yes, he would be able to get um, assistance from the legal aid center. Um, the offenses, they, they say it's a wide range again of offenses that they would be able to assist with. Um, everything save and except um, murder. Okay. So those gun, gun charges, they would be able to burglary, different type of criminal offenses, they can. Okay. Our final question comes from Jasmine. She asks, I want to get a divorce. I already have legal separation for over six years. 
Do I need to pay for a divorce or do I need an attorney? You need an attorney to file for a divorce. Um, even if it's a case that you have um, been legally separated and you have an order from the court that you are legally separated. Um, so the attorney must present that case in the courts for you. You can approach a private attorney for that service or again the legal aid center could assist with that. When we speak about representation, what kind of offenses require that a lawyer assist you? Um, if it's a criminal, um, if it's a criminal matter, um, whatever criminal offense. Um, again, in some, I, I should say that in some criminal cases, you can represent yourself. Um, for instance, that gun charge. Um, a burglary, a robber, you can. You have the option of representing yourself. Um, it's not wise, um, but if you're, if you're forced to do so, then there's nothing stopping you. And is there anyone that assists you with any kind of advice at least, since, I mean, you're doing this on your own? The judges, the magistrates would tend to assist. They would give advice um, and they may refer the matter, whether it's back to legal aid or they may, an attorney could be in court um, on a day I've seen it happen before and the judge may say, well, attorney X, I see you in court, can you render aid to um, Mr. Smith, who's seated in my court without representation? Um, I kind of put the attorney on the spot, <laughs> but um, from time to time it, it does work um, and it's, it's a way of giving back. One of the things we I hadn't asked you earlier is about police matters where mm -hmm. somebody feels that they've been abused by the police, they have proof of it, and they're just not satisfied with how the police investigation went. Can they take it further to the court? Mm -hmm. um, you can definitely um, launch your, your case in the Supreme Court. Um, and you would, your attorney again would particularize your matter and have it heard before a judge. Those cases are again dealt with in the Supreme, in the Supreme Court. Now, we've dealt with quite a bit of um, matters here and one of the things we spoke about in the beginning was with regards to forms. Mm -hmm. um, those can be daunting to people. You see a form, oh my goodness, yeah. that's just too much. Now, is there somebody that will take you through that process, assuring that these are properly filled out, properly filed, stuff like that? It depends, again, we're dealing in the Supreme Court, your attorney is fully responsible for the okay. completion of, of forms. Um, save and accept where it may be an estate matter, um, persons would apply for grant of probate or grant of administration, they can do that on their own. Um, in the magistrate court system, the clerk of courts um, generally assist, um, and even the magistrates, um, what we would say is try to get an attorney to look over your forms, whether it's a private attorney. Um, you're just seeking advice, you can just pay a visit to an attorney, look it over to ensure that it captures um, the essence of what it is that you're seeking from the court, that you have your cause of action listed there. Um, and then so that when you actually go before the courts for a hearing, um, it's properly formulated and you can lead your evidence um, and ensure that you get a fair hearing. And one final question, and then I'll also ask you to just uh, give us some final words, mm -hmm. um, probably to people who might have a case that they want to bring before the courts but are just unsure about it. But where can we find more information for someone who's watching the show but would like to dig deeper into how to access the courts? Um, they can visit www.belizelaw.org. Um, that website provides information on accessing the courts, the court system generally throughout the country of Belize, their access to the laws of Belize. Um, there's a brief description there um, about the judges, the magistracy system. Um, so you can look at that site and you can then get general information from there that would assist. And any final comments for our viewers? I would say um, for, for viewers not to be afraid 
um, of approaching the courts, of approaching attorneys um, to get advice of visiting the center. Um, it's on a walk-in walk -in basis. Um, the ladies there are always willing um, to assist. Yes, attorneys are busy, um, but arrange an appointment, set up an appointment, um, and obtain some advice, and see how it is that your mother matter can, can progress. Well, thank you very much, Deshaun. I hope our viewers, any that were unsure about what to do, I'm sure they got some good information for a head start at mm -hmm. least. So we've come to the end of our show for tonight. Thank you, Deshaun, for joining us and providing information on tonight's topic. Know Your Rights will be back next Monday with attorney Stevanna Duncan, who will discuss wills and after-death benefits. Tonight's episode will be repeated at 1 p.m. on Sunday on Channel 7 and will, will also be available for viewing on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you for watching and good night.